What's up everybody, it's Endymion, and recently there's been some concerning updates about the future of The Witcher at Netflix. And I'll also be covering a future spin-off show set within The Witcher as well, and some news about CD Projekt's future games set within the universe. So consider this video one big chunky information dump on everything conceivable happening right now for The Witcher. So get a snack, some apple juice, and prop your feet up, cause there's a lot. For starters, we have Redanian Intelligence and sites like MovieWeb.com all reporting on a massive rumor surrounding the future of The Witcher at Netflix, and it doesn't sound good at all. The news suggests that The Witcher may not exist beyond Season 5, which, if you recall, Netflix had planned the series for a seven-season roadmap. But of course, this was back when Henry Cavill was still Geralt of Rivia, and people still had faith in Netflix when it came to adaptations. I mean, can you blame us after things like Cowboy Bebop, where the creator of it said he couldn't even make it past the opening credits because he hated it so much? Or how they ruined Death Note? And don't get me started on that One Piece live action show, cause Jesus that'll be a stinker, I promise you. Don't ask questions, just consume product and then get excited for next product. Apparently Netflix is in disaster control mode when it comes to how The Witcher's being handled by showrunner Lauren Hisrich, and her lackeys like Declan DeBera, who was the showrunner for the awful Witcher Blood Origin limited series. Netflix executives are pressuring the writers and producers of Witcher to ensure that Season 3, which will star Henry Cavill and be his final season, sticks the landing. But more so than anything, Season 3 is being planned to ensure that fans who've condemned the show will feel optimistic about the future. But even more than that, Netflix is applying intense pressure to ensure that Season 4, which will star Liam Hemsworth as Geralt, achieves widespread critical acclaim and becomes a worldwide sensation like the first season did, and all I can say to that is good luck, cause you'll need it Netflix. It has the first uh, kiss between two men in the show. And if the writers, producers, and showrunners can't deliver, it's over for The Witcher when it comes to live action. Season 4 is in its early stages of being mapped out currently, and with how little faith fans have when it comes to Netflix already, another knife in the gut has emerged to wound the franchise. And it wasn't from fan backlash or Henry Cavill, but instead the creator of The Witcher himself, Andrzej Sapkowski. Recently, Sapkowski was attending the Taipei International Book Exhibition where he was being interviewed in front of a live audience. Among the questions from fans and the moderators, Sapkowski was asked what he thought of the Netflix series. To which he replied with, I've seen better, I've seen worse. It's not surprising that The Witcher's creator is disappointed with how Netflix has adapted his stories. As it was Sapkowski himself who gave a glowing review of Henry Cavill playing his Geralt of Rivia. Back when things were okay in the land of Netflix's Witcher, Andre was asked what he thought of Henry Cavill as Geralt, to which he said, quote, just as Viggo Mortensen gave his face to Aragon, so Henry gave his to Geralt, and it shall be forever so." End quote. It's clear that Andre is not happy with the reception to his life's work by fans and review sites. But in happier news, the author did reveal that he has plans to make more stories set in the world of The Witcher. He was asked if he would make a sequel to Lady of the Lake, to which he firmly stated no. However, Andre did say, quote, The story is complete, the saga has been concluded, so if by any chance I write something in the Witcher universe and I sure have such intention, it would probably be something like a prequel or a sidequel, not a sequel, end quote. Since he did create The Witcher, it would be interesting to see what Sapkowski has in mind for more stories, maybe another Witcher-like character, or something entirely different, who knows. But the fact the author seems to dislike what Netflix has done with the show just as much as fans is not a good sign. But it gets worse. It's been revealed that Blood Origin has done the polar opposite of what Netflix intended, with the show bombing to such a degree that Netflix is now in panic mode. Bon appetit. We have to also remember that Blood Origin was considered by its showrunner Declan Devera to be a story that rivaled the works of Andrzej Sapkowski. And the nuclear waste level of reception The Witcher has received has been anything but positive recently. But it seems that Netflix is not done with The Witcher as they have announced that they will be creating another show set within the universe. 
As of right now, the show's working title is Rats, which is based on the Nilfgaardian group of thieves who steal from the rich and give to the poor. The show is set to film in South Africa, but it's not known if series actress Freya Allen will be in the show, as she's currently all hands on deck with the latest Planet of the Apes film. It was announced a while back that one of the main members of this gang is being played by Christel Elwin, who will play Mistel. Netflix also released a character description which says, quote, Mistel is a member of the Rats, a gang of misfit teenagers who steal from the rich and give to themselves and sometimes the poor. She is street hard, suspicious of everyone, and out for revenge until a chance meeting that will change everything." End quote. The Rats will be officially joining the Witcher Netflix series in Season 3, but it's likely that Netflix is looking for any sort of story they can find within the Witcher IP to turn into content so they can keep churning out their nonsense. The rats are further described in the Witcher novel Time of Contempt, quote, They were united by their love of gaudy, colorful, fanciful outfits, of stolen trinkets, beautiful horses, and of swords. They stood out because of their arrogance and conceit, and overconfidence, and their contempt. End quote. Personally, I would have preferred a show set during an era of The Witcher where characters like Falca would appear, who was the daughter of King Verdank, the ruler of Redania. Falca is famously known for instigating a rebellion that would burn Redania, leading to bloodshed, and would set the stage for the events of The Witcher. Why Falca isn't the main character of a potential show, but the rats are, is anyone's guess. But this is Netflix we're talking about, so who knows. Also, this rat spin-off show will have Haley Hall as its showrunner, who's written for The Witcher since season 1. I know this may fill some with confidence, but we need to remember that the writers of The Witcher have been called out for their distaste of the franchise. Bodomeo, who was a former writer on The Witcher, actually exposed his fellow writers, and Netflix assured us that this wasn't the case. But then Blood Origin released shortly after, and Henry Cavill left, which makes DeMeo's statements all the more believable. So apologies if I'm not filled with excitement or wonder at the thoughts of another spin-off show that doesn't feature anyone I care about. The idea of a show set around thieves might seem cool, but frankly, I don't watch The Witcher for thieves, I watch it to see Geralt kill monsters, but what do I know, I guess. We also have to remember that Netflix's The Witcher is currently lagging behind other major fantasy franchises in terms of streaming numbers, awards, and overall audience confidence. But what are we learn about woman dwarves that we didn't know through your portrayal? Well, we learned that they exist. <laughs> the Witcher actually did release at the perfect time since Game of Thrones had just ended and disappointed everyone. And Rings of Power was still in active development, which allowed Netflix to fill the fantasy space with their series. But now we live in a situation where Rings of Power crashed in incredible fashion, but the spin-off show House of the Dragon has renewed interest with fans the world over. In fact, Dragon was nominated for multiple awards because it honored the source material for the most part, which neither Rings or Witcher has done, and look where that's gotten them. Another big mistake by Netflix was not giving its creator a seat at the table while developing the show, which HBO did with George with Game of Thrones, but what's done is done, and now they're reaping what they've sowed. The early writing stages, and it became very clear that the theme of this whole thing was that words, stories that are, are stolen by oppressors, and suppressed. What they're doing is taking away your greatest weapon, because words are more powerful than anything. Thankfully, in terms of gaming, The Witcher has had a resurgence thanks to the next-gen release of the game, as well as CD Projekt Red announcing multiple new Witcher games. Not only has this new version of one of the best modern games ever done insane numbers for the franchise, but CD even released some new info regarding the future of The Witcher when it came to gaming. The new trilogy of games set to succeed Geralt's story is codenamed Polaris, and CD plans to release the first game in this trilogy by 2025 to 2026. CD then announced that they plan to release the next two installments of Polaris within six years of each other, meaning by 2032 we'd have the final installment of Polaris in our hands. Which means by the time this new Witcher trilogy is alive and well, I will be in my early 40s. Time truly is a flat circle, my friends. The joint CEO, Adam Kaczynski, had this to say, quote, It's a bold statement as we are talking about three large-scale productions, but we really mean it and we have a plan how to achieve it, end quote. Let's not forget that this is CD Projekt we're talking about, the masters of delaying stuff. By then and good to go by April 16th, 
Well, that's a bit of a weird question because, I mean, if we wouldn't, then we wouldn't have to announce the release date. I guess our studio um, is one that really puts quality above everything and... Uh... As long as we don't have another cyberpunk situation on our hands, it'll be okay. Hopefully. The new director of this trilogy will be Sebastian Kalemba, who was lead animator on Witcher 3 and head of animation for Cyberpunk 2077. Sebastian said via his Twitter, Career news, I'm directing the new Witcher saga. Since joining CD Projekt Red, I believe nothing is impossible and raising the bar, telling emotional stories, and creating worlds is what we're here for. I'm proud to be part of CDPR and work with such a talented and passionate team. Then we have Canis Majoris, which will be a complete remake of the original Witcher game. It will be fully open world like Witcher 3 is, and will have a reimagined story with new quests and changes to allow it to better fit into the trilogy. CD Projekt's Adam Badowski had this to say, quote, The Witcher is where it all started for us, for CD Projekt Red. It was the first game we made ever, and it was a big moment for us then. Going back to this place and remaking the game for the next generation of gamers to experience it feels just as big, if not bigger, end quote. We have to remember that because The Witcher was the first game they made, it lacked a lot of the strengths of future games for obvious reasons. And it was awkward since certain characters like Ciri did not show up in it because CD was inexperienced at the time and didn't know how to manage so many characters in their first game. It's also why Geralt has amnesia in it because it made it more convenient for CD when it came to making the story and planning out the game. So hopefully this remake addresses all of this and restores a lot of the faults the original game had from like I said, removing characters like Siri and making the gameplay more action-oriented like Witcher 3. I guess time will only tell, but CD's current push for things like ESG and diversity do not fill me with confidence. Our annual sustainability reports will summarize progress towards existing goals and define ESG goals for future years. And CD did say that the Witcher remake would be done for a modern audience. And if you've been following the channel, you know what I think of that phrase already. It's never a good sign, but I'll stay optimistic regardless. Lastly is Codename Sirius, which will be a single-player meets multiplayer Witcher spin-off game from an American developer studio named The Molasses Flood whose previous game was The Flame in the Flood. That title is a survival adventure game with minimalistic graphics, but to be honest, I've never played it myself. But if you have, let me know what it's like in the comments. But it should be said that this multiplayer Witcher title will be the first time an American studio has had the opportunity to make a game set within the Witcher universe. And hopefully it doesn't suck. I also enjoy looking into what codenames mean because they of course have some sort of meaning. In terms of the Witcher remake, its codename Canis Majoris roughly translates into Wolf Ancestor, which makes sense considering Geralt is from the School of the Wolf and this is a remake. So what about the others? That multiplayer game I just mentioned is codenamed Sirius, which is the brightest star in the night sky. Sirius is also another name for the Greek god of the dog star, Cyrios. Sirius is also the brightest star within the constellation called Canis Major. Well, 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 Canis Majoris and Sirius. It also derives from the word meaning glowing or scorching, and it has adventurous connotations to it. And since this serious Witcher game is being made by the Flame in the Flood devs, I would wager whatever this game is, it's going to have similar survival elements and be focused on reaching a destination like Flame in the Flood was. And the Witcher is known for having crazy nonsense like vampires and neckers trying to kill you, so there you go. Could be an adventure survival game, but with more blood and guts. Finally, we got the main trilogy, Polaris, which means North Star. According to its definition, Polaris is a star of the second magnitude situated close to the North Pole of the heavens in the constellation Ursa Minor. Ursa, huh? Like the school of the bear, maybe? But the logo is a lynx, which was confirmed, but still interesting nonetheless. That being said, Polaris is often used to describe exploring unknown places. And when it comes to The Witcher, characters like Ciri, who've often been called the Lady of Space and Time, are able to travel to other dimensions and worlds. So could Polaris be a new trilogy about Ciri exploring the worlds beyond in search of something? I mean, the other codenames pretty much tell us what they are, so why would Polaris be any different? 
Polaris is after all used by navigators to determine their place in the world when exploring, and in Mongolian mythology Polaris is a peg that holds the world together. And remember that the conjunction of the spheres was an event where the various worlds and dimensions lined up, like a constellation no less, and gave us the world of the Witcher. So I think, of course I could be wrong, that Polaris and this new trilogy will be about exploring the worlds beyond the one the main trilogy takes place in, which is really exciting. Let's just hope they dial down the made-for-modern audience nonsense, because if these Witcher games end up being disappointing, I will become the Joker. I'm curious if that's comparable to this sort of world, this culture of toxic fandom, where like, if you make a movie, especially if you make a superhero movie, it does, like you have great intentions, but there are always gonna be a small yet vocal group of people there can kind of just be toxic. I understand what you're saying, but when it comes to fans, it is a fan's right mm -hmm. to have whatever opinion they want to have and people are going to be upset because especially when it you're talking about books or games because you're never going to be the exact person who they had in their head or who they played on Witcher 3 for example. I don't necessarily consider that toxic I just consider that passionate. Mm -hmm. But as always let me know what you think and I think that about covers everything. We talked about Netflix, Rats, Canis, Sirius, Polaris, modern audience nonsense, and how the entire franchise might come crashing down in a live-action sense in any moment. I still think if they are going to make anything into a show set within the Witcher universe, they should do a prequel story about Geralt's mom and dad, Vicenna and Corin. It would be such an easy slam dunk, but I don't work at Netflix, I'm just a guy naked on his couch in the end. Anyway, I hope this video has helped you in understanding something about the future of the Witcher, but let me know what you think as always in the comments. Thanks for watching everyone, and I'll see you in the next one. It's a show that's made with so much love and that's really fun.